Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm with the Events Calendar team. And today we're going to take a look at the settings for our free plugin, Event Tickets. So let's go ahead and check it out. So first things first, make sure you have Event Tickets installed and activated on your WordPress site. If you don't already have that, you can pick it up for free over at the WordPress plugin directory located at wordpress.org slash plugins slash event hyphen tickets. Now that event tickets is installed and active on your site, we're going to see an events item added to the WordPress admin net navigation right here on the left side of the screen. If we click that, that'll take us to the event settings for our tickets. And once we're in the settings, we'll see that we're taken immediately to the general settings section. Now there's only one setting here and that's this debug mode. Now debug mode is just a handy utility for when you're trying to troubleshoot errors on your site. By enabling debug mode, this will actually print PHP errors to your PHP error log as well as display them uh, on the site itself. So only use this in development mode or if you're really troubleshooting something actively on the site. And now for the display settings. When we come here, we'll see that once again, there's only one option here, and that's to change the format of dates. Now, there aren't that many dates used in event tickets. In fact, where you're only going to see this uh, is when you're actually selecting the start and end dates to start and end the sale of a ticket. Um, so there's a date picker, and that date picker will respect whatever setting you use here. Otherwise, this setting isn't used anywhere else in the plugin. Okay, let's take a look over at the ticket settings. This, unlike the last two screens, has a lot more options available to us. The first being ticket settings. This is where we can enable event tickets to be created on certain types of content. In this case, we have two options. We can create tickets on posts and pages. Note that if you have the events calendar active, then we will also see the option for events, and that will also be selected by default. That way, you can create tickets for your events as well as pages and posts. Now, event tickets also supports custom post types. So if you have any registered custom post types on your site, those will also appear here as options, and you can uh, select either of those. Next up are the login requirements. Now, this is where you can make it so that a user has to either log in before they can RSVP or purchase a ticket. This way, someone has to have an account with you on your site before they can actually take those actions. That can be a handy way if you want to make sure that you can limit uh, RSVPs and purchases to certain types of users um, and even collect information about them before they, uh, they RSVP or register for the event. Now, the last setting on this screen is under the Tribe Commerce section. Now, tickets are free by default, but Tribe Commerce changes that. When enabled, you gain access to PayPal, allowing you to accept online payments for ticket purchases. Now, Tribe Commerce is completely optional. If you already use or prefer to use another payment gateway for your ticket purchases, then you may consider adding Event Tickets Plus, our premium companion to event tickets that integrates with other payment gateways like WooCommerce and Easy Digital Downloads. Again, this option is totally optional and, un and even unnecessary if you're planning to create free tickets. Let's say that we've decided to enable Tribe Commerce to accept payments for our ticket purchases. We do that by checking the box right next to the Enable Tribe Commerce option. And when we do that, we get a whole new set of options underneath the Tribe Commerce section. The first of which is to configure PayPal with event tickets. And that involves making sure that the right PayPal email address is entered in there so that payments go to the correct PayPal account and also ensuring that you've enabled instant payment notifications and even a correct address to your website so that users can be successfully redirected back to your site once they've completed a transaction over on PayPal. The next setting is the PayPal sandbox option. Enabling this allows you to complete transactions on the front end of your website without money actually exchanging hands. Now, this is super handy when it comes to troubleshooting an issue on your site or in a, de in a development environment. So enable this for that sort of reason. After that, the next setting is currency code. 
Now, a currency code is just what type of money we're dealing with. In this case, we have US dollars selected, but we have lots of other options here from uh, currencies all over the world. Once you've decided which currency to work with, you can move on over to the stock handling setting. Now, this is a cool setting because it gives you fine grained control over how inventory is handled when a purchase is being made. Now, the first option is to decrease a ticket inventory by one ticket as soon as an order is pending or in progress. So if, an, if a customer has added a ticket to their cart and is in the process of completing an order, there will be one less ticket available in the inventory for other people to purchase. On the flip side, if we choose the second option, the ticket inventory will only change after the full transaction has been completed by PayPal. So no matter if the person has a ticket in their, in their cart or is in the process of, of completing a transaction, if someone else beats them out first and there's only one ticket left, then that second person gets the ticket instead. Uh, now, there are pros and cons to both approaches, but you get to decide exactly how that's handled. Now, the next setting allows you to decide where to send someone once their transaction is complete. Now, when someone purchases a ticket, they'll click purchase and then be taken over to PayPal's site where they can complete the transaction. And once that transaction is done, PayPal will send them back to your website. Now you get to decide what page that is. In this case, we have a page that we've created called Thank You. But really, any page that you've created in WordPress is available here. So you can either select an option that's already uh, been created on your site, or you can create a whole new page by going to Pages, Add New, and creating one right there, and then selecting it here. The last few settings control the email that users receive after they have completed their purchase, letting them know that they have tickets. Now, the first option in this group is the confirmation email sender address. Now, what this is, is just making sure that there's an email address attached to the email. It doesn't have to be a real email address, but usually it is. You'll see some companies do like a no reply at whatever.com. In this case, we just have hello at the events calendar.com. Uh, but really, you know, it could be any email address Preferably, it's good to use a real one, but it doesn't really have to be. It just needs to be a, an email address that, um, that can help identify who the email is coming from. And in that same vein, the next setting allows you to set the uh, sender name of the confirmation email. Now, you should use some sort of easily identifiable name. Like in this example, we're using the events calendar because that's the name of this site. Uh, so the person who receives an email sees the events calendar. They know that they made that purchase with the events there through the events calendar website. But this could be the name of your company, the name of your website. It could be any, it could be your personal name. Really any name works here, but just as long as it's easily identifiable for the person receiving the email to know who the email has come from. And then lastly, you get to decide the subject line for the email. By default, it's this cheerful, you have tickets, exclamation mark. Uh, but you can change that to anything you want. You can throw emoji in there. Really, you know, you can really make that whatever you want. Okay, so we just took a look at all of the settings that are on the ticket screen inside of the event ticket settings. But there's one screen left, and that's this tab right here called Licenses. And just like a few of the other settings screens that we've seen so far, there's not a whole lot going on here. There's actually just one field to put in here, and it's not even directly related to event tickets. In fact, it's for one of our other services called Promoter, and it gives you a field to enter a license key for that product. Now, Promoter is, is a service that provides automated email marketing for events using the information that's collected about attendees during registration. So that could be a very cool thing for you to look into if you're interested. And if you do purchase that a subscription to Promoter, this is where you would enter that license key. And there you have it. We just took a complete look at all of the settings for event tickets. Thanks for watching.